Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Sunday. Where are the, where are the dads at in the room this morning? Dads, where are you? Just put your hand up, wave. Hey, if you've got a dad sitting by you, turn to him and say, Happy Father's Day. I hope you have a day full of all the great dad things. I mean, it's raining, so I don't know what your grilling situation looks like today. But you do have a day full of looking at your grass and dreaming of having the best lawn in the neighborhood. Like, oh, the rain is making my lawn so green. It looks great. A day full of taking naps, maybe, on the recliner. A day full of organizing all your tools for the third time this week. All those great things. Uh, Happy Father's Day to all of the dads in here. We honor you this morning. It's a special Father's Day at my house as I'm going from a to being a father of two, to being a father of three this year, the last Father's Day of two, as we're welcoming a new baby into the house this December. So be praying for us. Uh, We need the prayer. We're still trying to get our oldest saved. Sometimes I I have questions about it. We're working on him. Uh, But maybe maybe Father's Day is a a hard day for you, like this video kind of hit on uh, because of the loss of a father. Uh, Maybe because you grew up without a father, maybe because uh, you grew up with a dad who wasn't the greatest dad, but I hope you can take heart this morning in knowing that we have a heavenly father, and he loves you so much, and he is far greater than any earthly father could ever be. He has a plan and a purpose for you, and he he wants to speak to you daily. So I hope you can take heart in that, knowing that he loves you, but for the fathers in the room, we just want to honor you. My prayer this morning is that you would be the spiritual leader in your house, that in your family you would be the spiritual leader, that you never ask the question, are we going to go to church this weekend, but you're leading the way in that, that you're leading the way in your devotional time, that you're leading the way uh, not just counting on Pastor Courtney or the youth team to, to lead your kids spiritually, but you're leading that, and what is being taught at church is just extra My prayer is that you would be that spiritual leader in your house and that you'd be challenged and encouraged this morning. Uh, How many grew up with a dad who loved to tell stories? Right, maybe your dad loved to tell stories. Uh, Maybe it was like of of the glory days, like back in my day, I used to be able to throw pigskin over them mountains over there, right? Like maybe it's those types of stories or maybe it's, war stories that they would tell, or maybe it's uh, stories of, well, you think you have it hard now. When I was your age, I had to walk three miles to school uphill both ways and go straight to work, right? Like those types of stories. Uh, but what we find is that stories, they're, they're fun, right? Stories are fun to, to listen to. Stories are, are fun to tell. Uh, stories can be powerful, right? How many know a story can be powerful, And today we're going to continue our series, Can I Get a Witness? Uh, And I want us to look at my story. My story and how my story, your story, is powerful. We're we're called to be witnesses. Acts 1-8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses. Someone say be. Someone say be. Notice it doesn't say, and you will do witnessing, but saying you will be a witness. Because witnessing isn't something we do, it's who we are. We are witnesses. And you're saying, well, I, I can't be a witness because I'm not like you. I didn't, I didn't go to college and, and learn about the Bible in college. I, I didn't uh, go to school to learn how to be a witness. But that's okay because being a witness, it's who we are. It's telling your story. It's your story. If you were to witness a car accident and you were to have to go to court and be a witness about what happened in this car accident, you're like, I can't do this. I didn't go to school to learn about car accidents. I didn't go to school to learn about how to be a witness in the courtroom. No, you're like, of course I can do this. All I'm doing is I'm telling my story. Being a witness, reaching people, is, is all about telling your story because your story should reflect his story. My story always reflects his story. So I want to ask you this morning, what is your story? Or if we want to use church words, what is your testimony? And are you sharing your testimony? Because we all have a story, but what are you doing with that story? Maybe not just have you shared your testimony, but are you 
sharing your story often? Are you actively sharing your story? So this morning, I want to give you uh, some practicals on, on here's why we share our story, and I want to give you some practicals on here's how to share your story. Because we're going to look at a story today in Joshua 3. You can go ahead and turn in your Bibles there. And we see that God did some powerful things in some people's lives. And they had good intentions to share what God had done in their lives, but there wasn't the best follow through. We're gonna see that the Israelites, they're crossing the Jordan. We know that the Israelites, they, they were slaves in Egypt. Moses comes in, frees them from slavery. They cross the Red Sea. They're wandering in the wilderness. It should have taken them a few weeks, a couple months. It took them a few decades, 40 years it took them wandering through the wilderness until we get to this point where Joshua is leading them across the Jordan into the promised land. So Joshua chapter three, we're gonna be starting in verse 15. It says, now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan. While the water flowing down to the Sea of Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off, so the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. If you have a Bible, if you have notes, just underline that dry ground. If you missed a couple weeks ago uh, for the Fresh Wind conference that we had going on here with Pastor Manny, he, he told this story. He walked us through them leaving Egypt and crossing the, the Red Sea on dry ground. And we see that when God brings us out of something, it brings us out on dry ground. Why? Because if they walk through mud, they're going to be tracking in the past into what God's calling them to. But we see that they walk through dry ground. This, what we see in this moment, is a miracle. It's a miracle that, that the water stopped and they walked through on dry ground. They should be walking through mud. How many times do we read our Bible and just skip past the miracles that happen? How many times do we go through life and skip past the miracles that happen because we're comparing it to something else. Well, it wasn't like this big healing, but it's these little moments, these little miracles that happen. I want you to remember those little moments today. Continue reading. We're, we're now in, in, in chapter four as we just finished chapter three. When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, said to them, go over for the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of tribes of the Israelites to serve as a sign among you in the future. When your children ask you, what do these mean? Tell them. Someone say, tell them. Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So we see that they cross over on dry ground. They cross over from wandering for 40 years on dry ground and as a symbol of remembrance, as something so that the, the next generation would ask questions and they'd be able to tell the story, they build this altar. They take these rocks out, put them on their shoulder, and they build this altar. If you were to go on and read, you, you see that then they're going to go to Jericho. The walls come down. They go on to continue conquering more and more land until we get to Judges chapter 2, starting in verse 6. It says, after Joshua had dismissed the Israelites, they went to take possession of the land, each of their own inheritance. The people served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him and who had seen all the great things that the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. They buried him in the land of his inheritance at Timnah, here's in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gosh. After that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, after that whole generation had died, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. So we see in Joshua, they have this moment where they're coming out of wandering. They cross the Jordan. A miracle happens. 
And they said, we need to remember this. We need to set up something so that we can tell the story of the years in slavery, of the miracle of crossing over on dry ground, not once, but twice. Miracle of the the manna from heaven, the miracle that God has brought us to the promised land. They built this with good intentions. But what we just read is that the next generation grew up and knew not the Lord, nor what he had done for, for them. So how do we get this moment of these good intentions to tell the story, but not any follow through? I can't help but wonder is, as they crossed the Jordan and as they went and they began conquering different land, did they get distracted with life? Did life get busy where all these new things came up and, and they didn't talk about what God had done in the past? Maybe they remembered, I remember walking over on dry ground, but were they active in sharing that story? Are you active in sharing your story? Or is it just something, I remember when this happened in my life that you just hold in and tell, remind yourself, but you're not actively sharing your story with others. It's important to be active in sharing your story. History is an important thing, am I right? It's important, we know that with Hitler, Hitler wanted to change history. He wanted to destroy evidence and make people see things the way that he wanted them to see those things. I wanna ask you this morning, are you actively sharing your story? Because if this were to happen again and someone were to want to change history, are they gonna read in their textbooks and just say, well, this is what my textbook says, this is what it must be, or are they gonna say, wait a second, my parents told me something different about this. My grandparents told me something, something's not matching up here. History is important. What, your family history is important. Where your family has come from, History of what God has done in your life is so valuable. That when I was 16, this happened, and when I was 20, this happened, and every year, every month, I've seen God faithful. He's faithful in the big things, and he's faithful in the small things. I can't help but wonder, did they, did they just, maybe they, they did continue to tell this story. They told the story of, well, back when, when we crossed over the Jordan, this, this happened, and we were slaves, and then we were free, and, and we entered into the promised land. Did the story stop right there? Does your story stop right there? Because lots of times I hear, well, when I was 16, I was addicted to drugs, going to parties, sleeping around, and, and then God saved me. But did you know that because we serve an active God, you have an active story? And sometimes I wonder, do we bring more attention to what Satan did in our lives or do we bring more attention to what God is doing in our lives? Where's the attention? Because because we serve an active God, we have an active story. Are you actively sharing your story? What is your testimony of today? Because it's hard to fight today's battles without today's testimonies. But when we have today's testimonies, we see God was faithful all the way back then. He was faithful in all these times. I've seen him faithful time and time again, so he's going to be faithful again for me. We focus on these these big rock moments. Like they had these big rocks. It says they put them on their shoulder. They went over and built this altar. And was all their focus on just this big rock moment. But the little rock moments, the little, those tiny miracles are just as important. Sometimes I think we compare like, well, this happened to me, but look at what happened to them. Like, that's the story that needs to be shared. But little rock moments are valuable too. Don't believe me, ask David. It's little rock moments. A little, a little testimony can defeat depression. Why? Because God is in it. It, it. It's God's story. Our story is reflecting him. But we compare. Oh, but I just have this little testimony. It's just this, this little moment. It doesn't seem that big, but a tiny testimony is valuable. Our testimony, it shouldn't just be this big moment of this is what God has done, but what I'm telling you this morning is it should be an active story of this is what God is doing. He's active in the big and the small things. Because you can have a testimony of, well, back when I was 18, right, which was 30, 40 years ago, I was addicted to drugs, going to parties, sleeping around, and and then God changed me, which is awesome, right? I don't wanna say that that's not a valuable story, but what happens when you're telling someone who's 18, you're saying, well, when I was your age, I was doing the same things you're doing because they're doing those things, and then 
God changed me, and they're going, well, I'm actually loving my life doing those things right now. Why would I want God to mess this up? This is great. But how are you sharing your story? How are you, is it an active story? Because why would I want God just to change it and then just leave it at that? But maybe a testimony is a little like this. When I was your age, I was doing those things. And you know what it led to? It led to me feeling unfulfilled, unloved, unwanted, and it led to being depressed. But then God met me in my worst situation, and I found that he loved me through it all. And as I've given daily time to him, daily devotion to him, I've seen him faithful through it all. As I surrender to him, I've found peace and joy that surpasses my understanding. And then it's not just, well, why would I want that to happen to me? But it's, tell me more about this peace. Tell me, tell me how you feel loved when you're going through all of this. What is your story pointing to? Because the questions that come from your story shouldn't be, well, what drugs did you do? It should be, well, tell me about what God did in that moment. Tell me what he's doing continually, not just then. I, I hear this a lot too. Well, Pastor Zach, I, I don't have a testimony. Like, I, I grew up in church uh, I've never done anything bad. I, 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 haven't, I haven't gone down those roads. I, I wasn't addicted to drugs. Hear me. You don't have to have a meth lab to have a testimony. Okay? But God is faithful through it all. Some have a story of God took me out of this sin, and some have a story of God kept me from that sin. That's a powerful testimony. That's a powerful testimony that you can tell someone who's growing up in public school. Hey, I I grew up in public school, and guess what? I was able to go all my years in public school and not drink a single drip of alcohol. I was able to grow up my whole life and to get married as a virgin, and you can do it too. God is faithful in those things. Your testimony is powerful. God maybe didn't take you out of something, but maybe he's keeping you from something. Because listen, our testimony shouldn't be look at how bad I was, but it should be look at how good God is. How good is my God? He's faithful. He's faithful in the big rock moments and he's faithful in the little rock moments. And what we see is that because he's active, I have an active story that reflects him. My story should always reflect his story. So what is your story? Because the Bible says here, The next generation grew up not knowing the Lord nor what he had done for his people. Does the next generation know what God has done for you? Does he know about the things that he brought you through, the things that he kept you from? I just wonder, how how did they not know God when, when he brought the generation before them out of slavery? 40 years wandering across dry ground twice, into the promised land. How did they not know God? Why? Because maybe they just stopped telling their story. Why? Because maybe their story just stopped in that moment. And if it wasn't active, why is it important? But it's an active story. There's power in that story. Why? Because it reflects him. There's power in the name of Jesus. And we know that as we receive salvation, we receive the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit gives us power to be witnesses. This is who I am. Your life, it should reflect your story. Does your life reflect your story? Sometimes I hear people share a story and about their life, about their testimony. I'm going, okay, what's different from that than right now? It doesn't look like much has changed. I, I remember in college, uh, we had a guy that moved onto our floor and he was telling Pastor August, Pastor Luke and myself about how he was from Indiana And there in Indiana, he got connected with the Indiana Pacers, the NBA team there, and that he got to go in on some of their practices and practice with the team, and that he would be in on their practices. And we thought, wow, you got to be a pretty good basketball player to be playing with NBA players. That's pretty impressive. Until we went down and played some pickup basketball and found out that he's no greater than me, and newsflash, I'm not the best basketball player out there, okay? But his life did not reflect his story. Is the story you're telling, is the story of Jesus reflected in your life and how you act? Because I know a lot of people who are great at inviting people to church, but that's awesome you can invite people to church, but if, if you inviting people to church, if your life looks exactly the same as their life, then why would I want that to be the case? 
Why would I want to wake up early on a Sunday morning if your life looks exactly the same as my life? But we're called to live a holy life. We're called to live a set-apart life. So our life should look different. Our life should be drawing people to him. It should be a reflection of the story that we're telling. Other times I, I see people who live a set-apart life, a holy life. They're honoring God in so many different ways. But because of that, they've set themselves apart from people. But we are called to be witnesses. It's, it's not a, do I live a holy life or do I try to invite people to church? It's a both and. And that holy living should draw people in to want to come to know Christ. It should be an easy way to be a witness. What is your story and does your life reflect your story? Okay, Pastor Zach, so you're telling me I have a story that's great. I want to be a witness, but how? I want to give you a few things this morning, uh, a few ways to make it easy to tell your story. So if you have notes this morning, because we know note takers are world changers, right? It's actually proven that you're way more likely to get into heaven if you take notes. It's <laughs> science. But go ahead, get some notes. I want to share with you how some of you are like, wow, wow. I can actually get into heaven if I take notes. <laughs> I'll share with you how to share your testimony. So if you're taking notes, write story down the side of it. I'm gonna give you an easy way to remember this. The S is gonna stand for start the conversation. This is where a lot of people get stuck. You haven't even begun and you're already stuck because you're saying, I don't even know how to start this conversation with someone. It's easy. There's one question you ask. You ask someone, what's the greatest thing that's ever happened to you? Nine times out of 10, they're gonna ask it back to you. Easy. Oh, the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Share your story. Number two, now that they've asked you back, you tell your story. And here's a sub point for this. Keep it simple, okay? Lots of times in church, we like to use these like Christianese big words. For example, when you're talking to them, you could use the word testimony, but that's like a church and a court word. Use the word, this is my story, right? Keep it simple. Use simple language in that. Also, make it quick. All right? I know you've got a lot to say. I know God's done a lot in your life, but we live in a very me-focused world. And if you're telling someone about your life and it's taking you 40 minutes, guess what? They're probably distracted. They've probably gone somewhere else in their mind. Keep it simple. Can you tell your testimony in 10 minutes? Can you tell your story in five minutes? Two minutes? Can you tell your story in 15 seconds? Because you know where a great place to share your story is? The elevator. They're trapped in there. They don't have anywhere to go. It's perfect. Here you go. I'll give you your start the conversation. They walk in. Up or down? Interesting choice. What about eternity? There you go. Share your story. 15 seconds. Make it quick. Also, tell it often. Tell it often. Make it something that's quick, that's told a lot of different ways, a lot of different times. There should be things set up. Like we, we love memories, right? We love the photo albums. If you're on Facebook, we love when it pops up and says 10 years ago today, we love to share that stuff. Are you sharing things that remind you of some time that God moved? Because that's gonna be able to create opportunities for people to ask questions. So we see we start the conversation, tell your story, obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. Obey that leading. It's so important to remember that, that as we receive salvation, we receive the Holy Spirit. If you didn't watch, go back and watch the last series we were in about the Holy Spirit. But we see the Holy Spirit has gifts for us. But understand that it's not just a gift to give you, it's a gift to me for others. He gives that to me for other people so that he can get the glory, so that he can move in that moment. And lots of times, I hear, well, I, like how much easier would life be if Jesus was just next to me? Like imagine that, like if Jesus was next to you, right? Students taking a test, that'd be the greatest thing ever. Like Jesus is next to you. It's not cheating because it's Jesus, right? Easy to take the test. Jesus next to you, you're tempted. Easy to avoid the temptation. Jesus is right next to me. But it says that Jesus next to you is not as good as Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit is in us and he gives us power to reach lost people. He gives gifts to us for others. Pray that, that God would open doors. 
as, as the leading of the Holy Spirit. Pray that, that as you see those doors open, that you would be led to say, this is an open door. This is an opportunity. This is a time to share your 15 second testimony. This is time to share your four minute testimony, right? Have, have those game plans ready to go. The next thing, remember, it's not about you, it's about Jesus. My story should always point back to his story. It always points back to his story. It's not about how bad I was, it's about how good he is. Lots of times we get hung up on, this is, this is what I did, and then God came in. It, it's about how good he is, because his story has the power to change everything. If you've encountered Jesus, you know that he has the power to change everything. So as we share the, my story, it reflects his story. It's about him because it has the power in his name. The last thing is this. You aren't presenting new information, but a relationship with him. A relationship with Jesus. The goal should not be for them to ask you, well, what drugs were you doing? It should be to ask you, like I said before, well, how, tell me more about this peace. Tell me about this joy leading them to have the same opportunity you had to receive him. And understand, sometimes, sometimes you might not get to that point because we're not call, you're not called to save anyone, okay? Sometimes I think we get distracted of like, I gotta save this person. No, you can't save anyone. You're not Jesus. We're called to plant the seeds. Sometimes you're gonna see that come through and it's gonna be an awesome moment. Sometimes you're planting a seed for someone else 10 years later. We're called to plant those seeds. It's not about me, it's about him. It's a relationship with him. So this morning, I wanna give you a chance to respond. We're gonna respond a little different, but first I wanna give you a chance to respond this way. Maybe you're hearing me talk about my story and Jesus comes in and he brings joy and, and it's an active relationship. And maybe you've thought like God is just somebody that we read about in the Bible and, and that just happens then and now we're just learning about it. But today you're hearing about it's an active thing that God wants to be a part of your life and he wants to bring you constant joy and, and walk through different situations with you. And today you wanna receive that. You wanna you say, God, I give you my life. I choose you. What does that look like? It looks like you maybe have been in the driver's seat and now you're getting in the passenger seat. You're saying, God, you lead the way. And if that's you, would you just respond saying, that's me today, I wanna give my life to Jesus. The greatest decision you could ever make. Here's the other way I want us to respond this morning is this. It looks a little different than normal. I wanna give you the opportunity right now, I'm gonna give you five minutes to write down your story. Because I know how it works. Lots of times it's like, oh yeah, I was really encouraged, I was really challenged at church today, and we go home and we get busy doing stuff, and then we come in next Sunday, it's like, oh, I forgot to do that. But I wanna give you five minutes to write down your story. Some of you, it's, some of you, you got a long story, and that's awesome. You're gonna write a 30-page paper about your, some of you about to write an autobiography, okay? But I wanna I want challenge you. What did God do in your life last week? Because he's active, and our testimony is active. What's, maybe, maybe today you're just gonna write down, here's the 10-second the version of my testimony. Here's the, the one minute. But I want, I want you to write this down whatever that looks like. And I, what I, where I want you to write it down, if you have the option, is on your cell phone. If you have a cell phone, a smart device with notes app on there, I wanna challenge you to write it there. Why? Because when you write it there and you get into the opportunity to share your testimony, you might be going, oh, I wrote my testimony in my Bible. I don't have my Bible with me right now. But you know what we always got in our pocket? We got our cell phone. So write it there. If you don't have a cell phone with notes app, that's all right. Write it down on paper. If you need paper, pencils, we got some up here at the front for you to write it down. But I'm gonna give you five minutes to write down your story, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna share with you what's next after that. If you would stand with me all across the room, I know some are maybe still working on it, that's okay, finish here after service, go home and finish writing it out. Come up with your different options, your elevator version, your long version. But I wanna pray for you because if all we're talking about today is just 
sharing your story and it stops right there, then, then we're missing the point, but we're called to be witnesses. We're called to be that. So what I wanna do right now is I'm gonna pray and I want you to pray with me that God would reveal one person that you need to share that story with this week. Who's the one person that I need to share the story? Begin praying for the open doors. Begin praying that your eyes would see that door open, that you know that opportunity. So would you pray with me? God, I pray for each person in here. I thank you that they have a story, that our story, it reflects your story, that, that you've done so much, that you've been a faithful God, that you've moved time and time again. And I pray that we would never stop telling our story. I pray that we'd be confident in what you're calling us to share. I pray this week that you would open up doors, that people would right now begin to see the, the names, begin to see the faces of the people that they need to share their story with this week, and that it would be an encouragement to that person, that we would plant those seeds, that we would be witnesses, that we'd, that we'd see people come to know you through our story. I thank you that, that you are an active God and you have an active story for us, that you're constantly moving. I pray that our eyes would be open to that and we would see that and we'd be ready to see you move over and over again. We thank you. We give you all the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Is anyone thankful this morning that God's given you a story? That we have a story. That he didn't just leave us in our worst situation. Because guess what? You have a story to share. And if you're in this room today, looks like everyone's in this room today, and you're breathing, I think everyone's breathing, then God's not done with you. We're not dead. He's still got a plan. Turn to your neighbor and say, I got a story. Turn to your other neighbor you just ignore because you don't like them as much and tell them, I got a story. I got a story and I need to share that story. Man, we love you, church. I pray your week will be blessed, that God will open up doors and that we would be witnesses as we go out. Have a great Sunday. Happy Father's Day to all the dads.
Got about one minute left. If you would stand with me all across the room, I know some are maybe still working on it. That's okay. Finish here after service. Go home and finish writing it out. Come up with your different options, your elevator version, your long version. But I want to pray for you because if all, all we're talking about today is just sharing your story and it stops right there, then, then we're missing the point. But we're called to be witnesses. We're called to be that. So what I want to do right now is I'm going to pray and I want you to pray with me that God would reveal one person that you need to share that story with this week. Who's the one person that I need to share the story? Begin praying for the open doors. Begin praying that your eyes would see that door open, that you know that opportunity. So would you pray with me? God, I pray for each person in here. I thank you that they have a story, that our story it reflects your story, that, that you've done so much, that you've been a faithful God, that you've moved time and time again. And I pray that we would never stop telling our story. I pray that we'd be confident in what you're calling us to share. I pray this week that you would open up doors, that people would right now begin to see the, the names, begin to see the faces of the people that they need to share their story with this week, and that it would be an encouragement to that person, that we would plant those seeds, that we would be witnesses, that we would, that we'd see people come to know you through our story. I thank you that that you are an active God and you have an active story for us, that you're constantly moving. I pray that our eyes would be open to that and we would see that and we'd be ready to see you move over and over again. We thank you. We give you all the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Is anyone thankful this morning that God's given you a story? That we have a story? That he didn't just leave us in our worst situation? Because guess what? You have a story to share and if you're in this room today, Looks like everyone's in this room today, and you're breathing. I think everyone's breathing. Then God's not done with you. Like we said before, if, if you're not dead, God is not done. He's active, and he has an active story for us. So let's worship him today. Let's let's give him the you're glory because he's dead. got a plan you're not and a purpose done. for us. Come on, church. And greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe I'm not you're not done Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead, you're not done Greater things are still to come
Let's celebrate that. We're not dead. He's still got a plan. Turn to your neighbor and say, I got a story. Turn to your other neighbor you just ignore because you don't like them as much and tell them, I got a story. I got a story and I need to share that story. Man, we love you, church. I pray your week will be blessed, that God will open up doors and that we would be witnesses as we go out. Have a great Sunday. Happy Father's Day to all the dads.